Welcome everyone to the Lawyers Committee and the Truth Action Project program. Today's program is called Recognizing and Pushing Back the Post-9-11 Police State. Our next speaker is William Binney. Uh, William Binney is a former intelligence official with the United States National Security Agency, the NSA, mm -hmm. and a whistleblower. He retired on October 31st, 2001 after more than 30 years with the agency. He's an outspoken critic of illegal domestic surveillance programs and as the creator of the Thin Thread, a surveillance system that would protect the United States citizens' private rights. Bill will be speaking on the 24 seven surveillance state, the new normal since 9-11. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just want to give everybody an idea how the uh how the system works in terms of a collection of information on everybody in the planet, including everyone, uh, our, our, uh, the president, President Trump, uh, all the members of Congress, everybody in the country and, and everybody in the world, basically. They're co collecting and capturing everything. Here are the basic principles of how they do it. They've got three access approaches. One is they use corporations uh, going left to right. They use corporations uh, and get them to agree to allow them to come into their facilities, put taps on the lines, and then capture the data directly from those taps uh, and forward it back to NSA for storage. And uh, uh, the second way, if that, if that doesn't work, they go to the foreign governments, for example, and uh, ask those governments to sponsor them and the collection of data on their systems and forwarding that to uh, NSA. In that vein, uh, the Danes recently caught the, the, their intelligence people forwarding data on their citizens into NSA for storage, and those people have been removed from their positions. Uh, the, the Germans have also found that out. It's, uh, it's just one of the ways of getting data. And if, they, if the foreign governments do not agree, they just unilaterally tap the lines. They'll dig a tunnel, do it underwater, whatever it takes to do it, they'll capture that line, tap it, and take the data off of it. Next slide, please. This is the one in terms of that's been, these, these slides, by the way, came from Edward Snowden's disclosures. The Fairview program is AT&T, and these are the tap points for the AT&T fiber optic network inside the United States. Now, if they were, they claim this is after foreign, uh, foreign uh, agents and so on, well, if they were after foreign agents, the only place they'd need to be to get them all would be along the coast with a transoceanic cable surface, because that's where all the access points, all the data coming from foreign countries comes in or goes out to them or transits the U.S. from Europe, say across the U.S. to uh, Asia. All those tap points contain all that data. So all the foreigners are there, but all these rest of the tap points distribute across the country with the distribution of the population. And by the compromise by, by Mark Klein uh, of the AT&T facility in San Francisco, they're using the NARIS devices to capture this information. Now, the NARIS Insight device will capture an entire 10 gigabit line, all the content, metadata, everything, and forward it to for storage into, into NSA storage facilities at Utah, the massive one at Utah, or one in San Antonio, or over at Fort Meade, or various others around the country. Uh, so this is the main target here for this system is the population of the United States, but it doesn't stop there. Next slide, please. It goes around the world, and this map shows the uh, <clears throat> shows the, uh, the the tap points in the world. Also, it talks about uh, the CNE commuter network exploitation. Uh, and it shows there, there's over 50,000 in the legend, the bomb shows there's over 50,000 implants in the, in the network worldwide. Well, that means they've got implanted software and, and or hardware in these different switches and servers around the world. And so they fundamentally own those switches and servers. They can route any kind of data they want to anywhere from anywhere in the world to them to centrally store and capture. Uh, that, but it's not that, that's not the worst of it. Next slide, please. They have another program called Treasury Map, which when it accumulates this information, which includes GPS, by the way, of every device in the world, that allows them to map the entire internet, any device, anywhere, all the time. 
So that means they know where every device in the world is. So if you're carrying your cell phone around, walking around, they know exactly where you are and they can do it in mass. You know, the billions of people using cell phones, they'll do them all. It doesn't matter. Numbers don't really matter for software. That's what people, don't, they think this is an overpowering problem for, for software and, and it's not a problem at all. It's just a matter of space and power. That's all it takes. Uh, but this then gives you the idea that they are knowing where you are and have captured everything you've said, what you're doing. Now they're doing, they're moving on to the visual side, which is going to capture you moving around. Um, but, but the next slide will show you, and I'm going to go into how they store the stuff and then how they, how they analyze it and what they do with it. This slide shows the internal programs inside NSA, inside that dotted line is NSA. Then you have CIA and FBI going through their facility at the FBI facility at Quantico, Virginia to go into the databases. But you don't see at NSA, this is all the collection from all those sources. You don't see any oversight of this. There's no oversight whatsoever of this. And it, it means that there are other people also now, and I'll show you some more people who have access to this data. The internal programs inside uh, NSA show the indexing of you, you making social networks and indexing it to the pinwheel kind of digital network in, uh, intelligence and then uh, Nucleon, which is the voice type stuff, communication by voice, so you can get the, <clears throat> the mapping of the social network, then is indexed to that data. So when, when they want to look at you, all they have to do is go to that map and they can pull out that data for any period of time retroactively for everything that's stored back to 2001. So this is, this is, this is on everybody, children, men and women, uh, representatives, everybody. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now this shows you other people who have access to this data, and it's not limited to this. This is the IC Reach program, a way of interrogating the NSA databases. You see the FBI, DEA, CIA, and DIA, but also the Five Eyes. Now there's another program called X Key Score, uh, which allows third other other parties who are also participating in collecting and forwarding data to NSA for mass storage. Uh, and that, that, <clears throat> that program is called X -key, X key score. And so they use that to interrogate it. And has a, probably has boundaries on how far they can go into the database and interrogate stuff. So, uh, but this is the one that shows you that uh, our, our Five Eyes partners are in, um, and also the FBI and DEA. Uh, and then, uh, can I go to the next slide, please? This is uh, how they, they map out, this is their vision, vision of digital network intelligence discovery options, DNI discovery options. They felt that with specific attributes of targets, known targets, that's the, at the very top of this pyramid, their traffic thief collects, detects those and pulls them out for the analysts to look at. But everything gets dumped into that pinwheel database and it's from, it's from full take feeds down at the bottom, you see. They're talking about interrogating that base for, that from these full tape feeds. That means everything that's collected by the fiber optic taps in the Fairview Stormbrew program is, uh, is Verizon. Blarney is about 28 other companies. And there's other foreign companies and second party companies, Five Eyes, inputting to this database. They're all, NSA has become the central storage for a lot of the countries in the world. And they're, and they're using this as a way of, of, de, of monitoring their populations because everybody's in there. All they have to do is use your attributes to go in and see what you're doing. They can map it out in a timeline. Um, but it gets even worse than that. If we have the next slide. Now they have set up a pro uh, internally in the Drug Enforcement Administration. Uh, Reuters reported this back in, I think, August of 2013, shortly after the Snowden material came out. And they talked about the Special Operations Division uh, this is a, a, a division of the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration that's job is to look into NSA data to find crimes. This includes people like the IRS and uh, representatives from all, all the major agencies, CIA, NSA, FBI, um, and uh, state and, and others, you know, and uh, they're looking for all kinds of crime. And they're looking through this, all this data that's been acquired without a warrant. None of this is based on a warrant. Okay, and it says in there, once you get this data, you, you, can, you, you can't tell, you can't put it in any reports or files, affidavits, you can't tell the attorneys, if you take people to court and arrest them and take them to court, you can't tell the court, you can't even tell the judge, 
against though, any state or local officials or any, any of the task force involved in the, in, the, in the arrest, all you do is tell them to go here and arrest this guy. That's from the content that they're analyzing. And, and, and they also use it to go to foreign counterparts like they, I'm sure it's going to you know, Scotland Yard, all the major uh, FBI, DEA relationships around the world. Uh, should I have the next slide, please? Now, after they do this, arresting people, they can't take that data into court because it wasn't required with a, with a warrant. Uh, so they do what's called a parallel construction. These are the rules of parallel construction. You simply use standard policing techniques through interviews, research, and, and, and uh, accumulate the evidence that, would sub that they could substitute for the NSA data in the court of law, claiming that that was the basis for their arrest. So in other words, that's the, they're claiming a falsehood is the basis for their arresting people. And they're denying those people the right to challenge the discovery of information that was used to arrest them because this is a farce, this is a, this is a lie. This is perjury in court of law. This is fabrication of evidence. Um, and it goes through and it says, you know, do this and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, make sure that MLAT offices, the attaches, their request, they, they, they do the same thing. So that everybody's hiding this major data acquisition pro uh, process that is really the power behind all the criminal activity or most of the criminal activity of our government and governments around the world. Now, you know, this, this, is, this is how we as a country have subverted our republic and have, and have metastasized this process around all the democracies of the world. This is, we're destroying democracy everywhere. And when in fact, there was a simple way to do things. Uh, next slide, please. Well, we simply, we had devised in the, and we're, we're putting together in the, in the Thin Thread program internally in NSA in the 1990s, that we were putting a program together that would filter out information from the web based on some simple principles like association in a social network, like phone calls, emails, financial transactions, whatever kind of transactions were occurring. Once you had a relationship, you could build these uh, social networks, right? And so if you had a, in the red area, it simply says, these are the bad guys, okay? So we know these bad guys. So when you're pulling data out of the massive amounts of data flowing by, you only look within the social network two degrees. With, a, with the understanding of the, of the second degree, cannot, that second degree hop cannot be through a government agency or a business. Uh, like for example, see, because if you do that, what happens is you pull in innocent, unrelated people to all kinds of activities. Uh, for example, if, uh, if, the, if uh, one of these red dots was communicating with the, uh, the lower light yellow dot there, and that's Google, well, then Google goes out to you know, 1.5 billion people every day. So if you go two degrees through that company, you pull in 1.5 billion people every day, and that pretty soon accumulates to everybody in the world. That's why NSA was so happy with uh, President Obama's limitation on them going two hops, because they didn't have the restriction on them. So that meant on the two hop principle, they could do everybody on the planet. Whereas we were saying internally, that's the only relevant data, everything else is not relevant. And if you, if you do what they're doing now, which is called a dictionary search selection type approach, that buries people in all kinds of data, even internal in NSA from the Snowden material, they, were, he was, they had written memos from their own analysts telling them we're over, overburdened by overload, we're too, we're too buried in data, we can't see the threats coming. And that's exactly what's happened. How many real threats have they stopped? They've done a lot of you know, enticing people to do things, but that's not stopping a real attack. The real ones, they've never stopped. Uh, and the reason is because they went and collect the entire world. And so they dumped it on their analysts and they can't figure it out. No surprise there. That's the reason we did the Thin Thread program. But that's what Hayden and Tennant and Bush and Cheney terminated. They didn't want any of that. They wanted to have the, pop, the knowledge of everybody in the population. At, at least my, my assertion is that Cheney wanted that. He grew up under Nixon, know your enemies, know all about them and all that. So he needed to do that. So this was the basis for being able to make that happen. It also, uh, uh, for NSA and Hayden and Tenet, gave lots more money to the, in, to the intelligence community so they could build up to what they are today. Over $100 billion every year is being spent on the intelligence community. I mean, when they could have adopted this simple principle, we developed this program for $3.2 million, and they wanted $3.8 billion to start with, a thousand times that, to start this bulk acquisition of stuff. 
So, you know, and it only doubled down after that 9-11, after that, uh, and it only got worse. Now, one, only one other principle we would use is looking at the internet, watching people who go visit sites that, that uh, advocate pedophilia or criminal, or any kind of criminal activity, like violence against the West, uh, jihadi type material and so on, and see who keeps visiting those sites. And then that then defines a set of people who fall into what I call the zone of suspicion, as do the second degree dots in the yellow here. They fall into that zone of suspicion uh, because they seem to be interested in a criminal activity. Well, if that's the case, then those two principles alone would have been used, if they used that and focused in on those people alone, they could have had and managed the massive amounts of data and had all the necessary evidence and data to at least be stop most of the attacks, including 9-11. And Tom Drake proved that by running the Thin Thread program after 9-11 in February 2002, right after, uh, uh, only on the NSA stored data, not, it wasn't allowed to be deployed like the Congress had mandated in the, in the budget. They had mandated the deployment of Thin Thread to the 18 sites that I found out from our terrorist uh, and analysis division were the sites that really produced evidence. Well, that, that to me uh, was then the main targets for our, de our deployments. And I wanted to do that in January of 2001, seven and a half months before 9-11. We could have had that done. Uh, most of it would have been done by electronic transfer, remotely accessing and transferring software so that the hardware existing out there could handle, could take it and use it. And then some of it would take a little bit longer, hardware mailing and so on, but, but that would have given us the lot, look and all the evidence on all the attacks, all these, and all these attacks by terrorism anywhere in the world. And the uh, NSA decided not to do that. The reason, very simply, in my view, was, and I knew that the uh, government or agency or com companies were in Congress in the, in the committees lobbying to have our program, Thin Thread, canceled. The reason is because the Thin Thread program, we've solved the volume, velocity, variety problem of the digital age. And that meant that we threatened the, the feeding by all these companies on all these billions of dollars they're anticipating down the line, which they have done. I mean, they fed all these tens of billions of dollars into NSA to do this kind of crap, to become the storage facility to allow them and enable them and everybody else involved in tapping into the database to, to violate everybody's constitutional rights and, and subvert the law and the courts all around the world. And this is how we've destroyed our republic and are and destroying democracy around the world. Thank you. Bill, thank you very much.